Hi, this is John Mount from WinVector LLC. WinVector LLC is a data science consulting and training company specializing in R and Python. What I'd like to talk about today is running in JupyterLab style sheets in Python, or basically doing data science in a notebook oriented way in Python. Now, some people feel that that can be kind of clunky. I disagree. I think it's a very fluid and interactive way to work, and it has a number of great tools that make it easier to work. The first of which is Anaconda itself. I use Conda as my package manager. I find it much safer and more replicable than raw pip installs, though obviously for something in production, you would make and freeze an environment using Docker or something heavyweight like that. Now, once you have your Python environment up with the packages you want, you want a editor or IDE. Um, I'm gonna talk about VS Code, but you also have excellent options in PyCharm Professional. You can try to run in Jupyter Lab, which is notebook oriented, or in Spider, which is uh, Python code oriented. Now, the task I'm going to show is The task I'm going to show is available from the WinVector GitHub repository, and it's a project called WVPY, which is available on PyPy and is open source. I'm going to go to the subdirectory examples parametric worksheet and take a look at my IPython or JupyterLab notebook. Now, the really cool thing about these sort of notebooks it include that they commingle cells that are markdown and cells that are code. They also have this neat run all button, which executes every cell in order. Just show that again. And the output of cells, for instance, here we have markdown formatted text with the run date parameter substituted in. The outputs are commingled with the inputs, and some of the outputs can be included images or even computer um, generated graphs. And the cool thing is, since everything in the workbook is code, if we wanted to make 10 graphs, that's just a matter of putting a for loop around this block of code. So a lot of processing is very easy to do in these workbooks. However, there's a slight sort of irony or contradiction that the workbooks themselves are sort of terminal objects that to run them you have to load them up and press run all in your favorite tool and you can't do things like easily call them from other notebooks or do a for loop over them certain batch tasks are quite easy like re-rendering them or converting them to html through jupyter nb convert but when you have a notebook, you're sort of saying this notebook's the entire world, and that's a limitation I want to talk about how to get around in this uh, talk. Now, again, the interaction is really cool. For instance, we can set a breakpoint right there, debug this cell, and we'll hit the breakpoint. We can single step over that line of code that we're at, bring up our debug console, and even interrogate variables. There, we just printed the value of x, but also we have state, threads, and stack available. So the, um, the power of the notebook is great. It's just what do you do after you're done with the notebook? You don't want to be trapped in this wonderful tool. You'd like to be able to move away and share great work. Well, the way to do that is you introduce just one more block of code. We'll do that right there. And it's this block of code. It's saying if there's a variable named worksheet params defined in our variable space, which it's not, you see, we're not, we don't define any such thing here. If there is such a variable, assume it's a dictionary for each key value pair, assign a variable with the key's name, the given value. So we're taking everything in this dictionary of present and setting them as values in our workspace. That is useful if we combine it with the running code, which we have here in the same directory, run examples.py. This is just a standard Python file with a main defined. And what it's doing is it's defining these Jupyter tasks. Now these tasks are in our WVPY package, which is up on PyPy. So they're not official Jupyter things, but they're built on top of NB convert. 
and they define a task and it says my task is n equals 5 run date is august 18th n equals 10 run dates august 19th we go back to our worksheet those were the two parameters we were interested in run date and n so we are setting all these parameters it's done just by including code that we just have this init code make sure date times defined before we use it and write out this dictionary in its representational or python form so what this task runner does is it creates many copies of our Jupyter Notebook, injects this block of code on top of each one. What this block of code is differs for each injection, so we get different runs. We then take this list of tasks and we send them to a multiprocessing pool. This means they are executed in parallel. And if we wanted to do more tasks after this is done, we could do another pool. For instance, if we had five data download tasks, we could do five jobs there. And then if we had three processing or model inference tasks, we could do those after with a second pool or list of lists. And then if we had, say, sharing results of data as data or building additional reports, another set of tasks after that. Then just for fun by hand, I'm hunting down the HTMLs, the rendering task takes the input IPython notebook, our JupyterLab notebook, and runs it. So any side effects like database access or writing data happens, and it also takes the resulting notebook and saves it as HTML. We can then, of course, take that HTML, convert it to PNG or PDF. Now we can run this task. To do that, it's super important we make sure the workspace is saved so that this cell we've introduced is on the file system and not just in our editor. Once we do that, we can go to that exact same directory. Here we have the Jupyter Lab or IPython notebook we've been talking about. And here we've got the Python program we were just showing us. So we just run it. It then defines the three tasks. Notice the parameters are varying and they are given as code, import date time, assign this variable to this Python dictionary, different ends, different dates. The renders all went to the parallel pool, they all completed, and then we did the conversions. We now have a lot more files. We can take a look at them. And here we have the run for um, n equals 5, August 18th, which is also reflected in the file name. Here we have n equals 15, August 20th, which is also reflected in the file name. And the run for n equals 10, August 19th, also reflected in the file name. And similarly, we have the uh, PNGs, which is not a very advantageous format, but we do have them. And we could also have converted to PDF. So back to our code, the all we did to make this a parametric worksheet that we could run many, many copies of, even in parallel, is we add this unpacking code. Then with whatever we want to do, we just make sure we pack up example data just like that. So here we're importing date time, so it's defined before we use that type. And we're saying worksheet params is a dictionary. And here are different values of the dictionary for each different sheet run. And we say the sheet name gets this additional string so we can tell the sheets apart. And this is the name of the workbook to run with the um, file suffix uh, elided. And uh, exclude input is a cute little feature. If you notice, none of the code cells made it from the IPython workbook to the rendered HTML. That's because exclude input dropped all the input cells on the floor. That makes for a sheet to, that's much more legible for people that aren't looking at the code. Of course, you can turn this feature off. And um, that is how to run very many JupyterLab worksheets using a for loop and reparametrizing each sheet, which means these sheets can now be combined into larger workflows without an expensive workflow system or without you having to open each and every one and press run. It really makes them themselves programmable, not just the benefits of programming. And again, my name was John Mount. I'm from WinVector LLC, and I hope this helps you out in your projects. Again, the project is called WVPY. It's up on PyPy, and it's public in GitHub, and we discussed the URLs in this talk.